Hello! It is a cozy, rainy fall day and I am enjoying a nice hot cup of coffee and thinking about sweet potatoes. Side note, is it just me or does Dylan's jacket remind you of the cover of Evermore? It's not the same, but I feel like a little bit like Taylor Swift when I wear it. Anyways, back to the point of sweet potatoes. Today we are going to be breaking down the sweet potato casserole, which is a common United States thing, but I feel like everywhere else, I don't know about Canada, but everywhere else thinks it's kind of strange. So first we're going to make a classic sweet potato casserole because you know Thanksgiving is coming up and then I am going to show two ways to sort of remix it, modernize it, or just take sweet potatoes and turn them into a side dish that you could serve on Thanksgiving or any night of the week. And maybe you'll enjoy it more than the classic if that's not your thing. So I've got all of my ingredients. <laughs> Zebby. Right here for my version, my vegan version of the classic sweet potato recipe. So let's get to making it. Classic vegan sweet potato casserole, let's get to it. So my version of this recipe is pretty simple and I would say made from more wholesome ingredients. And also the biggest difference is instead of boiling my potatoes, I prefer to roast them. So here I am stabbing my potatoes with a knife. This helps them cook more evenly and sort of release some of the steam as they cook. And roasting our sweet potatoes just brings out the natural sweetness, which means we need to use way less sweetener in the actual recipe. It also makes them way less watery. And yeah, that's, that's basically the main two reasons. So you're just going to roast them until they're nice and tender. As you can see, they're all pretty mushy and they have collapsed inside of the skin a little, that's when you know they are going to be good. And then now we're going to remove the peel. So this really depends on your potatoes. Sometimes you can just peel it off like so. Other times it's a little more tricky and you might need to use a spoon to scoop it out. Just make sure the potatoes have cooled slightly. I think I have restaurant hands because I used to work in the restaurant service industry. So I can touch things that are pretty hot, but you know, you do you, please be careful. Don't get burned, etc., etc. But you're going to remove the peels from your sweet potatoes. I roughly chopped mine up too, and then put them in a bowl. And then before I add anything else, I'm just using my handheld mixer to puree them. You could totally mash them if you want to, but that's just a lot faster. And now we're going to get on to adding our ingredients. So we have some thickened flax eggs. This acts as a binder for the recipe. Then we're adding in some sugar. I'm using coconut sugar, but you can also use brown sugar. And then for our seasonings, we have cinnamon, ground nutmeg, vanilla extract, and salt. And last but certainly not least, we're adding in some non-dairy milk. Here I'm using light coconut milk because I find it gives the texture of the sweet potato casserole a nice and creamy taste. I wouldn't recommend using like really watery almond milk. You definitely want something that's pretty full and creamy. So you're going to use your handheld mixer and blend this all together until it is nice and smooth and luxurious and this is basically well it is the base for our sweet potato casserole so i'm transferring it into a casserole dish that i lightly sprayed with some nonstick um, cooking spray i don't really think that's necessary but i like to do it just in case because you don't want yourself or your partner to be grumbling at you later if you burn something in the bottom of the pan so just use a spatula or even an better an offset spatula to mix this all around. But you know, the top doesn't have to be perfectly smooth because we are covering it up with those vegan marshmallows. I know some people are marshmallow haters, so if that's you, then skip the marshmallows, but I love them. I feel like they're classic and quintessential to this recipe. And then I'm also adding in some chopped up pecans. You could also use walnuts or if you're nut free, skip them or maybe even use some toasted peanuts. And then I also like to sprinkle a little bit of extra coconut sugar on top of my casserole. I find that it adds an extra layer of caramelization. So now we're going to pop this in the oven and once it's done, it should look a little something like this. If you need to broil it, just be careful that the marshmallows don't burn. Pro tip. So here we have our classic vegan sweet potato casserole. I'll leave a comment below and tell me if you're team marshmallow or team crunchy topping, I guess. I don't know. I grew up on the East Coast. My dad is from Tennessee and my mom is from New England. And we've only ever put marshmallows on top of our sweet potato casserole, which I do think confuses a lot of people. Cause they're like, well, isn't that basically dessert? And the answer is yes, but it's Thanksgiving. So I get to eat dessert all day. It's not Thanksgiving today, but I'm still gonna enjoy it. I also feel like if you're gonna add marshmallows on top, like 
You gotta go all the way. You can't just put a few. So you gotta be covered. Tastes great, nice and creamy, perfectly spiced. Love the toasted pecans. So there's nothing inherently wrong with it, but I'm just going to spice it up. We're going to keep the essence of sweet potato casserole for our next recipe, but make it a lot easier and more elevated, shall we say. But for now, I'm gonna dig in. It is another beautiful day and today I'm going to show you how to make my first twist on the sweet potato casserole recipe. For this one, we are going to the stove top and we're going to simplify the sweet potato casserole, but still make it taste similar or about the same. We're going to be making some candied stove top sweet potatoes with pecans. So you got the crunchy, you got the creamy, they're really delicious and super easy to make. So if you're fighting for oven space on Thanksgiving, this is a quick and easy way to do it. But also these are honestly just so delicious and a perfect fall treat. I could totally see myself making these for dessert one day or just like an afternoon snack. So let me show you how to make the recipe. Now let's make some candied stove top sweet potatoes. These are so delicious and addicting. I'm even thinking of serving them with like my smoothie bowls and oatmeal. I feel like it would work, okay? So to start out, you're going to need about two medium sweet potatoes and we're just going to peel the skin off of them because while fiber is good for us, it doesn't really work well in this recipe. So it's going bye-bye. And the sweet potatoes have enough fiber anyways. And now you're going to relatively thinly slice your sweet potatoes. You don't want them to be super thin because you still want them to have a nice chew, but probably about a quarter to a half an inch. And then I like to further quarter mine. That way more of the sweet potato surface area gets coated in our glaze. So the first thing we're going to do is to steam our sweet potatoes. So I'm setting up a little steamer contraption here, but you can do whatever works best for you. Basically a metal thing over some water in a pot and you're good to go. We're just going to steam them until they're fork tender about eight to 10 minutes, and then you can carefully remove them from the pot, but save some of that liquid because we'll be using it in just a bit. And now for our glaze, the best part, we're going to be melting some vegan butter on the pan. If you want to, you can use oil, but I think vegan butter adds better flavor and is more classic. So then we're going to add in some brown sugar, some cinnamon, and some ginger this time instead of the classic nutmeg, and a pinch of salt, and whisk this all together first. Um, we're sort of making a caramel, but we're not being fancy about it because it's definitely not gonna completely dissolve. We're actually just going to add in a tablespoon of that steaming liquid and then whisk it all, and it forms more of a glaze and a caramel, I would say, or caramel. You do you, caramel, caramel, who knows? Anyways, then we're going to add in our steamed sweet potatoes and we're also going to add in some chopped pecans for a nice buttery crunch and saute this up until everything is evenly mixed. And then you're just going to cook this down for about 10 to 12 minutes, waiting two minutes before you mix the pan. So that means it's going to get a little caramelized and brown on some sides and the nuts get perfectly caramelized along with the sweet potatoes. They taste just like candy pecans. It's so good. So then you can serve this however you like. I recommend warm and I'm a salty sweet gal, so I like to top mine off with a little bit of flaky salt for an extra crunch. So this recipe is actually inspired by two different things. The first one, obviously a sweet potato casserole. We've got a lot of those same components here, but the cooking technique is inspired by a traditional Japanese recipe. Um, I'll put the text on the screen. I believe I'm pronouncing this right. It's daigaku imo, which is typically fried Japanese sweet potatoes that are then candied. So they're crispy and soft on the inside, but the starch in a Japanese sweet potato is a little different than these. So these are still pretty soft, but you got the crunchy pecans. Um, two of my friends, Remy and Lisa, actually have versions of that recipe on their blogs. So I will link those down below if you're curious in making that. But the technique of the stovetop caramelization and then adding in some crunchy, they use sesame seeds, I'm using pecans, inspired me to recreate this dish. So I wanted to give credit to that. Then now for a taste test. I love how this yam, because it has like a higher water content, it's not a starchy, it sort of melts into your mouth once you cook it. But still got like a nice, sweet glaze and honestly the candied pecans make this for me mm -mm -mm. and if you are a salty sweet person you can just sprinkle some flaky salt on top of this and you still get that extra crunch and then good flavor combination but if you're like this is just too ridiculous i need sweet potatoes in a savory recipe that i can use in a side dish stay tuned because that's what i'm going to show you up next 
Like that's better. How long we're up close and personal. Hello and welcome to my basement studio. I've actually filmed um, a tour of this on a past YouTube video. I'll insert the thumbnail here and have a link down below. But I have all of my ingredients right here. I'm getting ready to film the final sweet potato recipe. And for this one, we are going savory. I'm going to be making a sweet potato gratin, gratin, gratin. I don't know. Uh, basically, when you thinly slice, like scalloped potatoes, you thinly slice them, you bake them in a cheesy sauce, it's cozy, easy, and delicious. And we're doing that today with sweet potatoes. Honestly, I think I prefer sweet potatoes and savory recipes, so I'm really excited to share this one with you guys. And this is one of those things that, yeah, you could serve on Thanksgiving. It's like a great alternative to sweet potato casserole. Um, but I would also serve this like any day of the week, any time of the year, fall through winter. I mean, heck. I love the combination of sweet potatoes and rosemary and garlic. So I might even serve this in like the spring and the summer. So I'm gonna put this camera, yeah, I'm talking to you. I'm gonna put you up here and then I'll walk you through how to do it. So let's go. I just tripped over my dog. Last but not least, let's get into this, can I say sexy, savory, sweet potato dish. I don't know, it's just the way those sweet potato curves look when they're baked. Just, it does, does something for me, you know? All right, so we're gonna start with about, again, two pounds of sweet potatoes and we're going to peel off that skin because again, in some conditions it can be great, but not in any of these. So it goes bye-bye. And then this time we're going to use a mandolin to slice your sweet potatoes as thinly as possible. I have in the blog post about an eighth of an inch, honestly, as thin as your mandolin will go, that is what I recommend. That gives you the best uh, gratin or scalped potato texture because you get tons and tons of layers. So you're going to put those into a big bowl and then set them aside. And now we'll work on our sauce. We'll start with some vegan Parmesan. I chopped mine up because my blender is high speed enough, but you can also grate yours. We're also throwing in garlic, nutritional yeast, some arrowroot powder or cornstarch. And then for our seasonings, we're adding salt, pepper, and ground nutmeg. I'm also adding in some olive oil. This helps make a silkier sauce, but you can leave it out if you prefer to not use oil. And then we're adding in some creamy milk. I'm using full fat oat milk here to keep this dish nut free but you could also use like a creamy cashew milk or even coconut milk if you would prefer. So you're just going to blend it up until the cheese is sort of integrated into the sauce. And then we're going to add our fresh herbs to the sweet potato. So we got rosemary and thyme and then pour the sauce over top of it and then mix everything together. This just really ensures even coating and a flavor distribution. And also when I tested this recipe, I blended the herbs in with my sauce and that was a mistake. The sauce was green. It did not look good. So I do not recommend doing that. Keep them separate and it adds a nice textural element anyways. So then you're going to pack your sweet potatoes into a dish. I sort of like to stack them with my hands first. Um, so it's a little bit more cohesive and then top it all off with that extra sauce. It has the arrowroot powder in it or cornstarch. So it's going to thicken in the oven and become a sort of cheesy sauce. And we just blended the Parmesan in because vegan cheese does not have the best rep for melting well. So this way it's an ensured smooth, consistent, cheesy bite. So this is what the casserole looks like once it's done and you can serve it as is. I wouldn't really serve this as a main, probably a side dish, um, but it's delicious. Boo. Just finished shooting. Maya, are you interested? Unfortunately, there's garlic in it, so you can't have it. I'm sorry, but I can feed you your dinner though. Do you want some food? Okay, let's go. Okay, let's go. Come on. Look who came home from work. <laughs> okay. Well, this just came. How does this look? Way better than the first version? First version was good too. Yeah, but it looked bad. I didn't even film it. I was just testing it and I was like, this is not gonna fly. It's good. But I like this better. Do you wanna do a taste test? Damn. Better than the first one, right? I like the time. Thank you. Mm. I honestly think the key with these is that I know it's an extra step, but you really need to mix them in the sauce first 
because when I just lay them in the dish and poured the sauce on top, there were several that just got stuck together and then they didn't have the flavor. So when you mix them in a big bowl first and then put them in, it helps them separate more so it's easier to serve and then everything gets marinated like while it bakes too. So I know it's an extra step and not traditional per se, but you just eat the crispy one? No, no. You no. can take the crispy one if you want. Oh, I can. Yeah. Mm. But I this think one. it's worth it. Your hand is overexposed, but it's fine. They get, they get the gist, I think. Mm. Well, all right, friends, that is it for this video. I hope you like this more casual vlog style type of video. Um, let me know if you want me to do this in the future or just the straight overheads. Um, but I think it's fine because I get to inject more life tidbits and tips and tricks and more real life stuff in it with this too. So check out all of the sweet potato recipes if you want to go classic, if you want to go stovetop, if you want to go savory. They're all linked below. You can save them all to Pinterest. They're all also on Instagram. I'm on Instagram and TikTok if you want to follow me on there. I post lots of delicious content. Which one was your favorite? Hmm? Which one is your Which one is your favorite? This one, the stovetop one, or the traditional one? You tried all three. I'm gonna say this one right now, just because it's so good <laughs> right now. I do love the savory sweet potato combo. All right. Oh, anyways. All right. Oh, you give me the 50 pounds. Bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Like and subscribe. <laughs> Bye. Thank you.